Good morning. Have you started a good week? So nice to have you back with me today. We're continuing our study in Mark's Gospel, and we've come to chapter 2 in the first verse. And again, this is a great little paragraph. Listen very carefully to what's being said. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard he'd come home. So many gathered there till there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four of them. Since they could got, not get to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, lowered the mat where the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like this? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Well, here's a nice little picture. Do you remember Jesus had left Capernaum and Simon Peter came and said, Lord, they're all looking for you. You've got to come back. And he said, No, I've got to go on and preach in other villages. Now he had returned to Capernaum and immediately the word got out. And people rushed from all over that little town to where he was, presumably back at Simon Peter's house. In my translation, Mark puts in such a neat thing here. So people heard that he had come home. You will notice that the center of his preaching was Capernaum. The sad fact is that the people of Capernaum did not really repent and follow him as they should have done. And later on he has to say, woe to Capernaum for their lack of faith, for their lack of response. Now, picture the scene. The house was full, all around the door was full, but interestingly enough, inside the house were the scribes. They had got inside. Remember that the scribes and Pharisees had been sent by the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem to listen to this new teacher. Now, there's nothing unusual about that. They always sent a committee from head office to listen to any new teaching, to check it out. So obviously they checked Jesus out, and sure enough they did. And the committee, and we'll see this as we go along, they pop up all over the place. Here they are in Simon Peter's house, listening to Jesus. And they were absolutely shocked. Why? Well, four friends brought a man to Jesus who was paralyzed. When they got to the house, the house was full, the doorway was full, there were people standing outside, and you can almost see the four of them standing there saying, well, what are we going to do? We've brought him for healing, we've got to get him in. So one of them has a bright idea. Let's take him on the roof, we'll open up the roof and we'll let him down. And that's exactly what they did. Now remember, these homes had flat roofs and they had a little staircase on the outside so you could go up and just siesta there. You could rest there during the middle of the day. So up they go. And they opened up that roof. Must have been quite a sight. If you had been down below with Jesus, little bits of straw and mud would come floating down. Next thing is you look up and you can see right through to the sky. And here are these four men. What do they do? They have a rope on this man's mat at each corner and they lower him in front of Jesus. Now something fascinating happens, at least I think it's fascinating. When that man comes down in front of Jesus, here he is paralyzed. He cannot move. What does Jesus do? He does not deal with the paralysis. But something else. Notice verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man. When Jesus saw their faith, there are times when we have to have the faith for another. And that's exactly what these four friends did. Jesus is looking up at them. And as he's looking up at them, in the spirit he's seeing the tremendous faith of these men. They'll do anything to get their friend to Jesus. That's fascinating, isn't it? How many of us don't even bother to bring a friend to Jesus? Well, he's not here. Well, yes, he is. Well, he's not here in person. Well, that's true. But in the spirit, he is more real today than he was then. He is here, and we need to introduce our friends to Jesus. They brought this man for healing, but Jesus saw their faith. But the interesting thing is the way he reacted. He said, Son, thy sins are forgiven. Well, you say, just a minute, Lord. That's not his problem. He's paralyzed. Jesus says, it's not the paralysis that is problem. It's his sins. And if I heal the paralysis, and he goes away with his sins, he's no better off. Well, that's true. 
be sure that you understand this. Sin has to be dealt with. And I really believe there are times when we pray for healing that the Lord our God hesitates. He waits. He doesn't work immediately because he has to deal with something else. And there's a period of time where he's dealing with other things before he brings the physical healing. And if he gave the physical healing right away, that person wouldn't be made whole. The rest of it would not take place. Now, the reaction of the scribes in verse 6. Some of the scribes were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like this? It's blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God? There's a lovely verse, verse 8. Immediately Jesus knew in the spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Now, they had a natural reaction. I don't think we should condemn them. I don't think we should blame them. But I think we should understand what's happening. Their natural reaction was to hear someone forgive sins was a shocking thing. They believed with all their hearts, as we believe, that only God can forgive sins. But Jesus was God, and Jesus is God. And suddenly we see the most fascinating thing happen. We see the divinity of Jesus, and we see the humanity of Jesus, all in this one incident. You say, now just a minute, what do you mean? Well, to forgive sins is divine. I can't do that, you can't do that. I can declare that your sins are forgiven in Jesus, but that's not what Jesus did. Jesus said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. No man on earth can forgive sins. We can say it has happened, but Jesus actually forgave. But then, immediately in his spirit, he knew what they were thinking. Now, it was not divine. It was human, and the Holy Spirit revealed to Jesus' spirit what was going on in their minds? That's important. Because I believe, and I've said this to you before, throughout the ministry of Jesus, he was dependent on the Holy Spirit. He did not use his divinity in situations. He was not reading their minds because he was God. He was listening to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit was showing him what was going on. Which is important for this reason. The Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit who worked in Jesus, works in you and works in me if we're Christian believers. Now, if that is true, the same Holy Spirit can reveal to us what he revealed to Jesus. He can reveal anything he wants to. The trouble is we're not open to listen. We're not open to hear. We do not respond. We're not tuned in to the Spirit. And I honestly believe the Holy Spirit is revealing things to Christians all the time and very few of us have our antennas tuned so that we know what the Spirit's saying. I always say, I never get a message from the Spirit. Yes, I believe you do. But I'm not sure your antenna's tuned to listen to what's going on. Jesus kept his antenna tuned. That's why he spent the night alone with his Father. That's why he went into a solitary place. That's why he went into prayer, so that he could be receiving, receiving all day long from the Holy Spirit. There were times when I don't think he knew. I think this happened after the Mount of Transfiguration. Do you remember Peter, James, and John came down that mount with Jesus, and at the foot they found the other disciples, and there was a boy there who couldn't be healed, and the father's there, and he says, your disciples couldn't heal him. And suddenly Jesus says to the father, how long has he been like this? Now, first of all, I think Jesus said it because he didn't know. And secondly, I think he said it so that the rest of the crowd could hear. But I don't think he knew. I don't think Jesus knew all things. If he did, he was not human. And here I see again that this is God coming through to the humanity of Jesus. Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts. He knew. And still, that knowledge comes to people. You could have that gift of knowledge by the Holy Spirit and you know exactly what's going on. Not because you know, but because the Holy Spirit's revealing. Why does this fellow talk like this, say the scribes to themselves? Now listen to Jesus' reaction. Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take up your mat and walk? But that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, 
took his mat, walked out in full view of all of this amazed everyone, and they praised God and said, we have never seen anything like this. What an exciting incident. Wouldn't it have been great to be in that house that day? Can you imagine what it was like? Jesus challenged these men. What's easier? Is it easier to say, son, thy sins are forgiven? Or is it easier to say, get up and walk? But that you may know the Son of Man has power. That you may know that the Son of Man has authority. In the Spirit, he had that authority. So he says it. Get up and walk. And the man does. Now, he wasn't carrying a mattress. He was carrying a little mat. So he simply rolls it up, puts it on his arm, and walks out. Can you imagine the gasp that went round that room? I'd love to have seen the faces of the scribes. Must have absolutely blown them apart. One minute they're criticizing him, the next minute this fellow's gone. Now, something else happens. The people started to praise God, and that's beautiful. You see, Jesus was the healing agent. And God was the healer. And that is always true. If you come up against someone who has a ministry of healing, know always they are not healing. They're simply agents. They're channels through whom the Lord is working. The praise is never to the person. It's always to the Lord our God in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what happened here. The people sat there praising and the scribes sat there furious. But they couldn't say anything. The man had gone. And by the way, as I understand it, the hole was still in the roof. I trust they immediately begin to put that straight again. But the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Yes, in his divinity he could forgive sins. And in his humanity the Holy Spirit revealed what was going on. What an exciting incident. And what a day for that man. Can you imagine? Those four friends must have come down those steps outside. They must have nearly fallen down. And away they went for a time of rejoicing, praising God for what he had done. I think this is an exciting story. What an afternoon. You see, he wasn't just healed. He was healed and he was cleansed. The sins had gone. He was walking again. And I imagine they went home rejoicing. Let me ask you something. Whether you're physically ill or not, have you had your sins forgiven? You've only got to come to Jesus. Repent, confess what you've done wrong, and he will heal you completely of those sins. Maybe you need that before you can be physically healed. 